Hi, this is Chris. Today I'm going to work on my loose leaf junk journal recipe binder. And I want to put a title. And I was thinking of putting recipes, but I think instead I'm going to put cookery. I think that would be cute. And so if you're interested on how I made this loose leaf binder from materials that I would have just uh, put in the recycle, plus a mechanism, uh, I'll have a playlist at the end of this video. I don't think this video will be very long today. I'm just going to work on the title and show you some things. So this is what the mechanism looks like. I really wanted a three ring mechanism, but um, I had to buy too many of them to get those. So this one came in a package of two, a six ring, and that's fine. So I'm going to actually take it out so that I can work on my um, spine flat. So these mechanisms are very easy. They just have a little bolt and a screw. Don't want to lose them. off like that. We'll put that aside. Here's the bolt. Take the bolt out. Now I can lay it flat and work on my title for the spine. So put that aside for now. And here I have a box of alphabet stamps that I've been collecting through the years. Alphabets and numbers. So I need to pick something that will fit. These fit. What I want to do is, is layer them. Stamp them on a paper and then, then layer them. Here's a real cute um, Whimsy alphabet. Here is uh, sort of a handwritten, but that won't really work for a vertical title. Here's the rest of that large alphabet. Here are the capital letters of the sort of handwritten alphabet. That's kind of cute. And I also have this regular. Um, bold font. These are Mrs. Sparkle. Ms. Sparkle. I have these here. Let's see if it has a... Those are nice too. The others are all too small. So I will pick out an alphabet and we'll do some stamping. I've decided on this font. It's called Alphabet Stamps 30 Count. There's no there's no particular name for this particular set. This is Mrs. Sparkle from Joann's. Start with a C. And I have some archival ink by Ranger. This is um, potting soil. And I've got some tea dyed paper I made a long time ago. I'll just try some different impressions. I like to clean my stamps with uh, stays on. Well, this stamp didn't hold a whole lot of ink. 
but it uh, I think it conditions them and keeps them working well. Okay, so now I need an O. Set those aside, make sure they're dry. And I'll decide what I want um, as the background. So I could I can use a similar background to this. I have all the digitals that I used. These images here are from Digital Grandma's Kitchen. And so I printed out, she has a full page of gingham and I printed out at 60% and then I'm going to use that as the background but first I'm going to grunge it up a little bit. So I'm going to Tear these letters out. And, um, I've mentioned this before. I don't know what this is. I don't remember where I got it. But it's real handy for tearing paper. And it's not quite as long as a ruler, so it's, it's a little bit easier to handle sometimes. had another idea. I'm going to take my alphanumeric stamp I have a scrap of what I used on the cover and I think I'll put my name on there. Can't pick that thing up, it's so little. to trim these. I think they might be a little too big. So if we put this one at the top. Okay, some of those can be trimmed a little bit.
sure to get right to the edge so that these don't catch on things and get pulled up. Another idea. Sometimes that can be dangerous, huh, when we have ideas, and sometimes they can be brilliant. So I'm going to take this Sharpie Ultra Fine Point Permanent Marker in brown, and I'm going to outline these little boxes because they're kind of lost. I'm just going to let the ink sort of soak into the paper. It's like edging, edging anything. on the cover. Good thing about the Sharpie is that it marks over glue too. Whereas some items, whereas some markers might be resisted on the glue. going to clean this up and uh, show you the last few things. I'll put this back together. I'll put the bolts in here. I glue all over my fingers. There's my little recipe journal. My cookery book. And I've started making dividers for it with pockets, magazine pictures, digitals. I have right here a pile of recipes that I can work on. I have here, um, I have these index cards that I found at Rite Aid. They come in colors, and I tea dyed some of them, and so they uh, it mutes the colors. They're not quite so bright. These are a little bit different. They must have uh, changed the design, or it's a different manufacturer or something. But I have those that I can use for my recipes, and then I have these um, library pockets with the adhesive back. And I've already made a couple of pockets using um, some scrapbooking papers. This is a digital of my grandmother's um, household accounts the first year that she was married. Same here. And I'm planning to make a digital of that. I haven't got around to that yet. So I have those that I can 
I can put in on a page like that and I could put a I could put a recipe in there. I could write the recipe name up here and then write out the recipe here or paste a magazine recipe on there. And I have these envelopes which I can put in here. And I can stick recipes in there that I want to try but I'm not sure I'm going to like them so they probably won't be permanent in here until I try them. So that's some ideas to do. And then I found a new uh, digital kit that I'm going to use. This one here is very uh, vintage. The pages that I just found is more um, 1950s era, more retro. And they're really cute. Look at these. So the retro, it's called um, Retro Food Edition 1 and 2, and Retro Food 1 and 4, and Retro Products 1 and 4. And these are by Divine Digital. And so I want to make um, some more dividers, and these files are all individual, so you can um, scale them down to what you want. So I scaled them down a little bit to fit on dividers. There's that one, and this one, and this one, and this one is so cute. I'm not that pretty, but that's what I look like when I'm trying to cook. And then the one with the mixer, and the uh, Rosie the Riveter heating up her sandwich with a blowtorch. And here's a lady who's not sure what to do with some lettuce and some canned goods. So that's the next thing that I want to do on this project. And it includes some food items which I scaled down to different sizes. That's what I used on here. Here's the uh, wheat checks. And then here's the quality street tin of candies and I found these file folders on Amazon they're made to hold a report and then a CD and they work real well for the digitals and the fussy cuts things that I need to fussy cut so that's divine digital I'll have links below for everything in case you're interested in any of these um, items. Well, I'm what? I'll have uh, links for the digitals and some of my tools. And there will also be a link to the playlist that shows how I made this loose leaf junk journal recipe book. And uh, Yesterday, I managed to get to Hobby Lobby after I took my family to the airport. Hobby Lobby is about 65 miles from here, so I don't get there very often. I got a package of Tim Holtz paper dolls. I got this stamp. Um, my crafty friend and neighbor has this stamp, and she let me borrow it, and now I found one of my own. It's inspired by life, created by hand, one of a kind, art created by, and then there's a line for you to put your name. I also found this one, uniquely handmade limited edition. I found this nice thank you stamp. They had quite a selection of thank you stamps. These were all $3.99. And then I found this um, bee stamp. I've been looking for a bee stamp, and this is a really pretty bee. And it comes with this uh, floral on there. That was $10.99. These are all 40% off. Hero Arts. So I got those. And then I got this little tin. They had several of these cute little different styles of uh, retro art tins in the sewing department. 
I thought that was cute. So that was my little my little haul. Thanks for watching and have a great day crafting.